Today we're reviewing a Gigabyte Socket A motherboard with VIA chipset and universal HEP slot, so you can use your 3DFX Voodoo cards. I saw this motherboard on the Electromine website and I asked them if we could have a unit to check out. It sells for 23 euros on the website, but for you guys there's a 20% discount coupon in the description. So a lot of you have asked me to do some projects with the Socket 462, also known as Socket A. Such systems are compatible with Windows 98, Windows XP, but also great for DOS gaming. This motherboard is from Gigabyte. It is the GA7VK MP-VA Revision 5.1, but it is an OEM motherboard for Fujitsu Siemens. It comes with the VIA KM266 chipset. This is basically the KT266 with integrated graphics in the form of S3 Pro Savage DDR with up to 32 megabyte of shared memory. We will look at the board in more detail soon, but let's dive straight into some benchmark results comparing the integrated S3 graphics with a dedicated GeForce 2 GTS. For motherboard and CPU tests, I benchmark at low resolutions and quality settings to make sure that the GPU isn't a bottleneck. And we can see that at 640x480 and 16-bit colors, the integrated S3 graphics is fast enough to play many games extremely well at around 60 FPS. The GeForce 2 is clearly faster and at higher resolutions and settings the gap will just widen but at the right settings it's nice to see that the integrated graphics is actually somewhat decent. S3 graphics have always been strong in DOS and the Pro Savage DDR is no exception in most tests. It is not far behind the GeForce 2 but there is a larger gap in Chris's 3D bench and it wouldn't run Quake at 640x480 but apart from this you can comfortably use the integrated graphics for DOS retro gaming. Coming back to the motherboard, we have a universal AGP slot. We have two DDR slots for up to two gigabyte of memory, which I tested and works just fine. And we have three PCI slots. There's just one jumper to worry about, which sets the bus frequency between 100 and 133 megahertz. The board has USB 2.0 ports at the back, as well as headers on the board itself. We also get onboard ethernet and audio, but for retro gaming, I recommend going with a dedicated sound card like a Sound Blaster Live. Furthermore, there's a serial and parallel port at the back and headers for a second serial port as well as audio front panel. The board arrived in good shape. There was a bit of dust, but it was clean arrivals anyway. The caps are all Japanese with a mix from Sanyo, Nishikon and Rubicon. So Fujitsu Siemens made sure that quality caps are fitted. But despite this, one of them is showing some signs of bulging at the top. But this didn't cause any issues and the board was perfectly stable when I worked with it. So this just shows that even quality caps on these older motherboards can require replacing. So this being a Fujitsu Siemens OEM board, we get all the documentation and downloads from their website. If it has a BIOS, we're going to flash it. You run the BIOS program on a modern PC and that will create a boot floppy. Start the motherboard with that floppy and off it goes, flashing the latest and greatest BIOS. We get decent BIOS options, but of course, no overclocking or voltage controls. Like on most Gigabyte boards, pressing Control F1 will unlock a few hidden options, but whereas on a retail Gigabyte board you will get an entire new page with lots of options, on this OEM board we just get a few options like this one named Fast Command. I tried setting the quickest memory timings and 2336 was the quickest I could configure. There was also no option to set the command rate to 1T. So let's see how this board compares against the fast one. Here we have the Asus A7V266-A with the VIA KT266A chipset. This board shows slightly slower timings of 2.5336, but it has an option for command rate of 1T which are configured. Comparing the two boards, we can see that the ASUS is taking the lead across the board. So the Gigabyte board isn't going to set any benchmarking records, that's for sure, but Fujitsu Siemens likely tuned this board for stability and reliability rather than maximum performance. I certainly had zero issues when using this board, so that was good to see. A real highlight is the universal AGP slot. I first tried a Diamond Viper V770 card, which is a River TNT 2. This card won't work on new motherboards that don't support the 3.3 voltage. Next up, I tried a Voodoo 5 because this is what a lot of you are looking for, pairing a Voodoo card with a fast Athlon processor. 
I also had a look at trying out some faster processes. Unfortunately, there's no CPU compatibility document. And also, I don't have that many Socket A processes, but that should hopefully change in the future. Anyway, I tried an Athlon XP 1600 Plus and that worked great. I also tried one of these AMD Geo CPUs and to my surprise the board posted just fine and CPU set reported it as a XPM processor. Now we will check out this special AMD Geo processor very soon so stay tuned for a video. So there's a lot to like about this board. It is micro ATX so you can build a nice compact retro gaming PC. We have Japanese caps a bias that is geared for reliability and stability and all the documentations and downloads are online on the Fujitsu Siemens website. The integrated graphics was surprisingly decent, it supports 2GB of RAM which is nice and the universal AGP slot is a real highlight. The performance is behind that of the fastest motherboards and the BIOS has no options to tweak performance or overclock but then I didn't encounter any stability issues which is just as important. So for the price, I can recommend this board. You get good value and it's a good foundation for all sorts of retro PCs from DOS to Windows 98 and even Windows XP. And that's it for this video. Let me know what you think of this board. Any questions, just post them down below in the comments. And if you want to see more motherboards getting reviewed in the future, also let me know. If you found this video useful and you want to see more content like it, please subscribe if you haven't done so already, click on that notification bell and give it a like. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.